You are listening to episode number 48 of the Secondary Science Simplified podcast. As teachers, we never have enough time to do all that we want to do with our students. Between labs, demos, lectures, and assessments, it's hard to squeeze it all in, whether you have your students for 45 minutes or 90. The solution is not to complain or cry or give up, although I've been tempted to do all of those things at times. But the solution comes in reclaiming time in your classroom. If a teacher tells me they don't have time, I guarantee that if I observed their class for even one period, I could find places where time is getting wasted. And it's not the fault of the teacher, it's just the second law of thermodynamics. Now, I think that there are three places that all teachers often find that time gets wasted. And I also have five solutions for how to reclaim that time. Are you ready to hear more? Let's dive in. This is Secondary Science Simplified, a podcast for secondary science teachers who want to engage their students and simplify their lives. I'm Rebecca Joyner from It's Not Rocket Science. As a high school science teacher turned curriculum writer, I'm passionate about helping other science teachers love their jobs, serve their students, and do it all in only 40 hours a week. Are you ready to rock the time you spend in your classroom and actually have a life outside of it? You're in the right place, teacher friend. Let's get to today's episode. Like I mentioned in the intro, the best way to reclaim time in our classrooms is to first look at where it's getting wasted. And most of the time, I find that this is happening in three key places in our class periods. One, in the transitions. Two, in getting our students' attention and wasting time and energy there. And three, in how we are collecting and returning graded assignments to our students. And I find this especially to be the case if you are managing large classes. I'm talking 30 or more students that you are managing in your classroom at one time. And if that's the case, you need to make sure you go back and listen to episode 43 of the podcast where we talk about tips for managing large classes like that. But again, whether you have a large class or small, time is just going to get wasted. And don't beat yourself up over this. It's just entropy. But that doesn't mean that we are hopeless as teachers. So I'm going to share with you my five best solutions to reclaim time when you're getting students' attention in those transitions and when you're collecting and returning assignments. Because even if it is just a few minutes here and there, those minutes add up quickly, especially if you are a teacher that only has 45 to 50 minutes of them at a time with your students. So let's reclaim those minutes for you. And the first way I want you to do that is by clearly teaching procedures to your students. I swear that most of the time gets wasted in our classrooms in those transitions. And if you're like me, you love to constantly switch up what you're doing with your students in your class period to keep them engaged. I like to change what I'm doing basically every 15 minutes with my students. So that's a lot of transitions. And if you're looking for some support in terms of how to kind of structure your class period. And if you're wondering how I'm changing it up, what am I doing every 15 minutes when I'm changing it? I have a free PDF download. I call it the anatomy of a class period. And it's two pages. It's so simple. The first page shows how I break down a 50 minute class period. And the second shows how I broke down my 90 minute blocks because at the different schools I've taught in, I've done both. And I will link in the show notes where you can grab that for free. But again, Time gets lost in these transitions, and especially if you're transitioning a lot, those minutes will add up. And we can eliminate this by establishing procedures that we clearly communicate and consistently reinforce with our students. This is a refrain of the show. If you've listened to this podcast more than once, you have heard this before. Teach your students a procedure for coming into class and getting started. Hello, prime times, my old friend. If you also have been around my corner of the internet long, you know how much I love Prime times. And that's what I call my bell ringers because I think the first five minutes of class is the most important five minutes of the entire class period. I have an entire podcast episode dedicated to this. Episode four, one of my very first episodes, is all about prime times. So you can listen to that there. But having a procedure for getting kids in and started in your class is so important because so much time gets wasted there. That's one of the reasons why I love prime times. Also, establish, clearly communicate, and consistently reinforce a procedure for your students in terms of how you want them to set up and clean up from labs. Teach your students a procedure for how to turn in work 
We'll talk about this more in a little bit later in the episode. I'm telling you, you will be amazed at the time that you get back by simply teaching your students how to do basic daily tasks in your classroom. If you are not sure where to begin, I think there are five procedures that are the most important to teach that every teacher needs to establish with their students. And I will link my blog post in the show notes that talks about those five procedures. Okay, so the first way that we are gonna reclaim our class time is by teaching our students procedures and teaching them clearly. And the second way we are going to do this is by maintaining a daily whiteboard agenda. This is another sneaky spot where we lose class time that we can easily reclaim. And it's when we get off track. Keeping an agenda daily on your whiteboard with a plan for the day is essential for you and your students. Don't waste time and precious whiteboard space writing out an essential question and the standard that you're covering unless you are required to. I think a lot of teachers do that as part of their agenda and our students don't care. Only do that if you have to. What your students want and need to see are a bulleted list of what they're doing that day and any important due dates highlighted. Or if you have homework, put that there too. But I'm a big fan of not assigning homework. And to avoid going on a tangent about this now, I'll link another blog post in the show notes that you can read all my thoughts on that. But I keep my whiteboard so simple. I have one side that's due dates for each class period and then one side that leaves a space for the bulleted list. And I have another blog post that I'll link that has a picture of this so you can see what I'm talking about in it of my whiteboard. But again, just keep the list simple and bulleted of what you wanna do and cover in that class period. You'll be amazed at how it holds you accountable to keep moving through what you need to do that class period and how it prevents students constantly asking you, what are we doing today? Are we doing anything today? You can just point to your agenda and say, this is what we are doing. And to help make sure that you keep moving through that agenda that you're keeping on your whiteboard, you're gonna need a timer. And that's my third solution for you to reclaim class time. Use timers for everything. Teacher friend, you are in charge of your classroom. This means you are the keeper of the clock, not your students. Set timers for literally everything. Are you doing a think, pair, share? Put 60 seconds on the clock for your students. Are you sending your students out to research a topic and then report back to the class? Give them three minutes on your timer to make that happen. Are students working independently on a reinforcing exercise, like they're doing some practice problems or something like that? Set the timer for seven or eight minutes before you send them off to work. You will be amazed at how much more on task your students stay when they realize that the time they have to work is limited. This is not meant to rush your students. It's just meant to keep them focused and working on the task in front of them instead of getting distracted and talking about who is on homecoming court. Okay, so you you need to use this timer for your students, but also for you. And like I said at the start of this, you are the keeper of the time. If you see that your students are working on something diligently and the timer goes off, feel free to give them more time. You are in charge. The only rules are the ones that you decide upon. But what I found is I'm guilty of, okay, I'm going to send you off to work on this, you know, lab or work on this activity or work on this practice with a neighbor. And then I start grading something or, you know, I start, I peek at my email and I get distracted and then 10 or 15 minutes has gone by. They haven't finished the assignment because they've been chatting and I haven't been checking in on them. And I have like lost quarter of my class period. And so the timer is so great for you and also your students in keeping on task and keeping moving through the class period. Another very, very simple solution is utilizing a bell to get your students' attention. Like I said at the beginning, we lose a lot of time in transitions, but the second place we lose a lot of time is just getting our students' attention. We lose precious seconds that can add up to minutes when we're trying to get their attention, especially on lab days when they're off working in groups and it's loud and it's crazy and you're trying to rein them back in to tell them something important. Get yourself just a little bell and enjoy never raising your voice again. Train your students that when they hear you ding that bell, they stop what they're doing and they look at you. And in this training process, I want to encourage you to kind of penalize them in some way if they don't stop and look. This will allow you to train them faster if they realize there's a consequence for not looking. Personally, I love to use something called board points as a whole classroom management strategy. And what I do is I ding the bell. And if they don't look and I have to ding the bell two or three times, I dock a board point from the class. 
and this trains them so quickly. If you do this enough, it will become second nature to them. I swear my students had like a Pavlovian reaction to the dinging of a bell because I train them in this so intently. And it doesn't have to be fancy. I have a $5 bell from Amazon I've used for years and it still works. I will link it in the show notes and I'll also link a blog post about board points if you want some more tips for whole classroom management. It is, board points are like disturbingly simple and crazy effective. I'm truly shocked they work as well as they do. So get yourself a bell to get students' attention and reclaim some of your class time there. And last but not least, I want you to practice a turn-in system with your students. I cannot tell you how to reclaim your classroom time without mentioning doing this. I know I already told you that you need to clearly teach procedures, and this final tip kind of falls under that initial tip, but this needs to be a whole separate point because I want to make sure I emphasize this because it's so important. If you feel like time gets wasted in your classroom and you want to gain it back, you need to establish and practice a turn-in system with your students. I cannot tell you how much time is wasted when students are shuffling back and forth, turning papers in. Especially if you do a daily bell ringer, which I 1000% think you should, that's something you are collecting within the first five minutes of class every day, and you don't want your whole entire class period to go off the rails, wasting time before you've really even gotten started with your class. So establish a system for how you want your students to turn in work to you and teach it to them. I teach my students to pass their primetime bell ringer sheets to the right, and I collect them in rows that way. Since this is something I'm collecting daily, five minutes into the class every single day. This decreases so much time by keeping them in their seats at the start of class and allows me, when I return them to students, to do it so much more easily at the start of class because I've collected them kind of in an order. They're in these rows and then I can pass them back so quickly. I do that during the class change before I start waiting out in the hall to see my students. I get that prime time sheet back on their table waiting for them. Now, other things I collect which is rare because I like to decrease the amount I grade as much as possible, which I have a blog post on, which I'll link in the show notes. But if I collect anything else, I have this turn in bin on my wall. It's really simple. And I'll just set a timer and say, okay, it's time to turn in your lab. You have 30 seconds, go. And they get up and they get moving and they go. I'm telling you, just using that timer is so simple. But for them seeing that like, oh, there's like a time in which I need to get this done in, it gets them moving and hustling so much better. And it just gets you moving on to the next thing so much easier. And when it comes to returning things, I only return things while my students are doing independent work. So if they're doing a think pair share or, you know, if they're working on an assignment independently or in a small group, or, you know, if they're writing notes during lecture, that's when I'm passing back work that I've graded. I'm double dipping, so to speak, in order to save time on the returning end of graded work. Okay, I know I may have sounded like a drill sergeant in this episode, but you would really just be so amazed how much time you can reclaim in your classroom with these five simple changes. So I really want to urge you to try one of these this week and let me know how it goes. Shoot me a DM on Instagram and tell me. I truly love hearing from you. And you can always find me there at its.not.rocket.science. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. You can find all of those links that I mentioned. I know there were so many, but I couldn't help myself. You can find them all at it's not rocket science classroom.com slash episode 48. All right, teacher friends, that wraps up today's episode. If you're looking for an easy way to start simplifying your life as a secondary science teacher, head to it's not rocket science classroom.com slash challenge to grab your classroom reset challenge. And guess what? It's totally free. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you here next week. Until then, I'll be rooting for you, teacher friend.